اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وی شل ہیو سم ڈسکشن اباؤٹ دی نیچر اف دی مکی سوراز ایز اے ہول اینڈ ہاؤ دے ار گروپڈ یو نو وی ہیو بین ان دی مدنی جنہ دس واز مدنی جنہ البقرہ آل عمران then nisa then maida it had a taste of its own wa min dunihima jannatan as we find you know in surah ar-rahman we were you know walking in the jannah of madina what were the problems there what were the issues there the issue of munafiqin the issue of al kitab then you the commandments the do's and don'ts this do do this don't do this this is permissible this is haram this is the law all these discussions were there but you know the conditions in the makkah were absolutely different no munafiqin no ahl kitab there is a mention of ahl kitab in makki surah also but it's a you know sort of zimni secondary not directly talking to them addressing them So what are the problems here? The polytheism, the idolaters, the associators with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then they didn't believe in resurrection, some of them. Most of them didn't believe in resurrection. Thirdly, they were just ignorant of anything which they might call prophethood. The Jews knew it. They believed in so many prophets. The Christians knew it. After all, they also b- believe in the Old Testament and whole history of the prophets. But these people at Mecca, they know who is the prophet because their history was just ap- empty from it. So these are the main issues that are discussed in the Mecca surahs. Number one, Iman, Tawheed, Ma'ad, Resurrection. Risala, the institution of prophethood. Number two, basic moral teaching. Not the legal teachings. Basic morality. And criticism of the society which had decayed morally. You have become bankrupt morally. That was the condition of the society at Makkah. Then you know here, The conflict was between the idolaters and the muwahhideen, people who believe in one Allah. The conflict, you know, as time passed, nearly slightly more than 12 years after the beginning of Wahi till Hijrah. And you know, this conflict, the intensity of the conflict became severer and severer and severer and severer. For the first three years, they were only persecuting the person of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that only also through words, verbal persecution. Oh, he has gone crazy. It seems some evil spirit has overtaken him. Oh, he has learnt poetry from somewhere. Oh. He gets dictation from some slave. He has some very learned, some Christian or Jew in his, you know, house, hidden there. And he gets the, you know, dictation from them because he is talking so much of the, of the prophets of Old Testament. Where from can he have the knowledge? He must have some Jew or Christian slave in his home. He has hidden them there and getting the dictation and here he comes to us and you know, he says it is Wahi from Allah. So all these things were being said for him. Majnoon, Sahir, oh, he is a sorcerer, no doubt. Whenever he speaks and he reads, you know, what he says to be the word of Allah, actually, our hearts, you know, they get influenced. So he is a sorcerer, he is a magician. So only these things were said about the Prophet. 
which I am labeling as the verbal persecution. And that was only for the Prophet's personality. But from the fourth year after Hijrah, fourth year after the beginning of Wahi, physical persecution started. Beat them. Keep them hungry. Tie them up in the homes. Imprison them. Especially the youth who were naturally at the mercy of their elders. The elders can do anything to their offsprings. And more so, you know, the slaves, they were owned by them. They were their property. They could kill a slave whenever they liked. Nobody could question them. Why did you kill him? Just as if you have a goat and you sacrifice it, nobody will go ask, why have you sacrificed this goat? Because I own it, I can sacrifice it any time I like. And this, this you know, slave is also my property, I can do whatever I like. So this conflict, you know, was progressing and progressing and progressing. And the second point that I want to make clear, that there are, as I told you, there are seven groups of Makki and Madani surahs in Quran. But the first group is very peculiar. The Makki surah was only surah al-Fatiha, a very small surah, seven ayat. Although it's very profound, it's equal to the whole of Quran, Ummul Quran. But here we find four longest surahs of the Quran, Madanis, Baqarah, al Imran, Nisa, Mahida. Now, what does it mean? That actually there are only six groups of Makki surahs in the Quran. If you just keep away Surah Al-Fatiha, it's a preface to the whole of the Quran, not to the first group only. About these six groups, first group is this, comprising of two surahs, a pair of surahs, that is Al-Anam Al-Araf. Then we shall have a pair of Madani surahs, Al-Fal and Tawbah. Then 14 Makki surahs. Surah to Yunus, Surah to Hud, Surah to Yusuf, Surah to Raad. You just listened today, those of you who were present in the Taravi. Surah to Yusuf and Surah to Raad. Then you know Surah to Ibrahim, Surah to Hijr, Surah to Nahl, Surah to Bani Israel, Surah to Al-Kahf, Surah to Maryam, Surah Taha, Ambiya, Hajj. 14 surahs and then a single surah, Madani. And that is Surah Nur. So we have six groups. The general distribution of these groups is, if you divide the 12 years into three parts, first four years, middle four years, last four years. The surahs which were revealed during the first four years are in the last two groups. The surahs which are included in the middle two groups they were revealed in the middle four years. And these surahs, which are in the first two groups of the Makki surahs, they were generally revealed in the last four years. So it's the reverse order. The reverse order of compilation in that respect also that the first Madani surahs we have read, although they were revealed after Hijra. And reverse order in this also, in this aspect also, that among the Makki surahs, which were the latest in Revelation, appear in this book in Musaf, first of all. Then the middle. And then those surahs which were revealed in the very beginning. Especially this pair, you know, about Surah Al-Anam, let it be known, that this was revealed in the last year before Hijrah. And number two, there is the Hadith, from Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an, which says that this was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one piece at one time. I've been telling you that the period of the revelation of Surah Al-Baqarah, about two years. Just beginning just after migration, Hijrah, till the battle of Badr. In the same way, the period of revelation of Surah Al-Ma'idah, six, seven years. Some of the ayat are much later, which are included in it. But this Surah Al-An'am, it was revealed as one piece, one khutbah, one sermon, 
ون ڈسکورس ہول ایٹمس